All right, welcome back, everybody. This is David of the David Show. We're playing Sakura Spirit. Um, this is a visual novel. So far, no boobs. Uh, but so far, uh, I guess I'm Takahiro Kun. I'm the the narrator. He's a judo rising judo star, and he went to this shrine that I'm at right now to hopefully get prepared for his upcoming tournament or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, I'm having a lot of fun playing. Even though it's not a game, it's a visual novel. It's just fun reading this and like trying out weird voices, even though it hurts my voice. I hope you guys are enjoying it too, because I'm going to be playing this a lot. And I, I still have yet to see boobs. Alright, here we go. Well, let's continue. As my vision grew blurry, the sound of approaching footsteps could be heard. Whoops. No. Oh, there- Boobs! Good luck, hero. You're going to need it. That's the mysterious girl that was hot. Jesus Christ. Right off the bat. Despite my attempts to back up, get back up, all I managed was a brief look at the girl. The sight of horns and a tail left many questions, but before I had a chance to utter even a single word, my consciousness succumbed to the darkness. Look at those. She's naked. D ellipses. Double ellipses. Triple ellipses. Quadruple ellipses. Rays of sunlight stirred me back to life, a groan of annoyance leaving my mouth while I tried to get back on my feet. I felt a little I felt a bit dizzy, but the first thing I noticed was that I was no longer at the shrine. Instead, it looked like the forest near the dojo. Of course, my first thought was to look around to see if I could find the girl from before, but not a trace of her presence remained. <laughs> to make things even stranger, the path that I had followed amidst the trees seemed better maintained than I remembered. I should probably head home. That thought was cut short when the sound of several female voices could be heard nearby. Get back here! Oh, damn it. Just what do you think I'm doing? I'm chasing them. I'm trying to stop them. Singing voice. Yeah! I think she noticed what was missing, Onisama. Keep running, little one, and we might just make it. Just when I thought this day couldn't get any weirder, the sound of heavy footfalls could be heard nearby. <coughs> oh, more boobs! What in the world's going on here? Okay, let's just take a chance. Let's take a moment to just see what's going on here. On the left, we got two cat girls, one in red, one in blue. They have heaving breasts, and they are smiling. One's giving like a peace sign while they're skipping through the air. They look like they're having fun. On the right, there's two girls without cat ears. One has a trident on the left. The other has a, a sheathed samurai sword and a weird spiky hand. I'm guessing that's a motion blur they're trying to convey there. It's an anime thing. Why they... Whatever. All I have to say is boobs. What in the world is going on here? Further ahead, I saw a couple of girls in fast pursuit of even more girls. However... There was something off about the scene, something that didn't make any sense. Oh, they have tails too. The girls being chased had the ears and the tail, uh, and the pursuers appeared to be armed with the katana and the ginata. You convincing, you conniving fox, come back here at I can't do girl voices. You conniving fox, come back here at once, return what you stole immediately. Give me back my panty, oh Jesus. <laughs> How could you say something out loud like that? Ha <laughs> ha, panties, panties. Ha <laughs> ha, oh no, help. Save us from the rampaging women. Hee <laughs> hee, there's too many girls. I have to remember, I can't remember the voices. As I watched the girls run off, I couldn't help but find myself struggling with the decision to just leave them be. While I didn't know what in the world was going on, the two girls armed with rather realistic looking props, surely they couldn't be real, had me worried. I couldn't very well call myself a hero. If I let something like this go by without acting. I'm so gonna regret this. Mumbling in annoyance, I chased after the girls. Hikagi, go round to the left. Right. I said left. Why do you always undermine me? I was saying right because I know, never mind. Just run after them. As I was chasing the girls, I noticed the trees seemed to be getting denser, making it gradually more difficult to navigate along the path. How can you navigate when they have those heaving breasts? Onisama! Oh, here we go. Onisama, I don't think I can run much anymore. I'm I'm starting to feel feel a bit. <laughs> she's 
just a little longer, Mayako Chan. We're almost. Mayako! Mayako, that's not on no, no, no. Sorry, I'm a chan. Oni chan. Sama. Scissor attack! I arrived just in time to find a scene taken straight from an action movie. The girl with the blonde hair had collapsed, held in her companion's protective embrace. The two armed girls were approaching them, almost unmistakably with killing instincts running amok. Any seasoned martial artist would have felt it. Those girls were going to be in for a beating if I didn't stop them. We got you now, thieves. I'm going to be per- I'm- ugh. I'm going to personally drag your sorry butts back to town and have you both put in the stocks. Maybe I'll even show you how it feels to run around without any undies on. Yeah! Although, I must admit, having a breeze down their feet does feel kinda nice. Keeps me feeling fre- God damn it. What is this game? Hikagi, good goodness. Don't you have any shame? This isn't about you, it's about our undergarments. Stolen! And these two criminals being brought to justice. Yeah. Only time it hurts, my head hurts. Shh, it's going to be okay, little one. Hey, guards, if you're so desperate to have your underwear back, then here, catch. Stop, stop it right there. <coughs> However, before I was able to interrupt the conversation, the silver haired girl tossed something into the air. Whatever it was, it was flying straight towards my head. The two samurai girls instantly grew flustered. Oh, there, there they go again. Oh, I can't see. Who the hell tosses up? Peeling the items off of my face, I raise them into the air, looking like a professor examining an important sample. While the thieves made their escape, a pink bra and lacy black panties. Oh boy, I knew this was going wasn't going to end. What, what is this game for? Are you supposed to be jerking off while reading this? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, just ate a bunch of chocolate. Wait. Oh, wait, I, oops. No! Okay. Ah, oh, there you are. Are you in cahoots with these crafty foxes? And hand those back immediately. Those are evidence of a crime, and not for anyone else to touch. Drop the panties right there! I'm innocent until proven guilt- Oh. I'm in innocent until proven guilty. It's one of the golden rules of the court. Just stop pointing those weapons at me and I can hand over your... Uh... Undies. Without being turned into shish kebab. What? No. Shut up. Just drop the evidence and walk away. I am Sukunu Mayo. Sukinu Mayo. Chief of the village guards, and I'm ordering you to drop what you're holding right now. I don't know of any village guards, and I seriously doubt a cop would go around dressed like that and wielding a katana. She's in like a. Okay. She's in a schoolgirl outfit with fishnet stockings. The girl on the right is also in a different schoolgirl outfit with uh, weird leg bands and arm guards. What the fuck is going on here? Okay. More importantly, the ground here is muddy and dirty. Are you sure I shouldn't drop the evidence here? I mean, I could, but... Yeah! Before I could react, the pink-haired girl lunged towards me. The pointy end of her negante aiming for my gut. My reflexes caught on just in time, and I was able to palm away the sphere as it sailed through the air. I struck upwards on the wooden shaft of my dick, sending it up into the air and causing the girl to lose her balance. Narumi, I did not order you to attack. Fine, fine, I'll give him back. Jeez, just my luck to find a bunch of crazy girls with weapons. Extending the hand that held the undies, I tried to hand him over. Something that I would soon end up regretting. Ha! You think I'd fall for something so simple? Fool! You may have fooled me once, but I won't let it happen again. The woman swung her weapon wide, arching the thick wooden pole into my side before I could dodge. She then lunged forward and grabbed me tightly, pulling my arms around behind my back, leaving me with sore ribs and in a prone position. I could have fought back, but I figured it would have only led to more fighting. With the possibility of ending up stabbed, I decided to remain passive. The sword le Ugh. I don't know how longer I can do this for. <laughs> the sword-wielding girl stepped forward and grabbed the silky underwear from my hand triumphantly. I gotta speak slower. Huh. Your methods might be crude, but they do get results, Takage. Time up. We'll bring him in for questioning. He probably knows where those pesky thieves are hiding. Right! 
and people wonder why criminals want to resist arrest at all costs. I mumble this weakly as the girl with the naganata tied my wrist together with a rope, and I soon felt myself dragged by the duo towards the city. Surely once we're out of the forest, you two will stop this act of yours and let me go, right? As much as I like to fool around, I have more important things to do. The city? Ha! We're not taking you all the way there. Billy's we'll spending the night in the village cells, thief! Who are you calling a thief? I'm the victim. First, I got undies tossed in my face. <coughs> then I had to deal with physical abuse. And now, these act- I gotta drink some water real fast. <clears throat> and I'm back. Oh, actually, you know what? That's a good place to end. All right, I'll see you guys next time on the David Show. Hopefully, my voice will be back. Bye bye.